Hey guys, what is going on? This is Pants R Dragon, and today we'll be doing a little video on six god tier junglers for low ELO as of season six. So this is going to be a little bit different than what I usually play, and also is more catered to the lower ELO, as there are really strong champions in like silver, bronze, and gold, which aren't too strong in like diamond and master and challenger. So that's why I'm making this video to show you guys what champions are good in bronze, silver, and gold. So with all that being said, let's get started. Now if you guys want me to skip to the part where I talk about the champions, click this stupid annotation right here and we will skip to that part. Otherwise, I'll just be explaining the criteria I used to make this list. And the first criteria I had was that the champion must be easy to play. Bronze, Silver, Gold, they don't have the most optimal mechanics. Like for example, Lee Sin is a champion that takes a lot of mechanics to play. Sure I've seen, you know, like Silver Lee Sin's doing some inset combos, but for the most part, there's a lot of mistakes I do see that like Silver players do with Lee Sin, and they could have been much more efficient. But basically, the easier the champion is to play, the less mistakes they will make. The next point, these champions must scale good into the mid game and late game. Games in lower elo, they actually go on for a really long time, so champions which have a lot of damage and tankiness in the mid game and late game are the strongest champions. I'd say it's very rare for a game to end at 20 minutes unless it's a surrender, so your best bet is to have scaling champions. And the next trait here is going to be great team fighters. Champions who have a lot of AoE, CC, base damage, tankiness, you know, all these stats are pretty good. Especially champions who can initiate very well. Those are your best team fighters. You want champions that can destroy team fights, as that is one of the main things that happens a lot in lower ELOs. It is just a straight bloodbath. And that is also related to my next point, which would be you want champions that can skirmish very well. So small team fights, you know, 2v2s, 3v3s, any champions that perform extremely well in those situations are really good. Now next up, I'm going to be talking about some things that were definitely avoided when making this list. For instance, early game junglers. They excel at snowballing the early game, but if they do not get a snowball in the early game and the game goes on for a long time, they are going to fall off. And the thing with early game junglers is that they're punished really hard, especially if they do make a mistake. For example, Evelyn is someone who is very useless when she is behind, but unlike a tank who is still useful because she or he has hard CC, like a Mumu, and also still has good base damage. The next thing are going to be high mechanical junglers. As stated earlier, Lee Sin is a champion you want to avoid because there are so many things you can do with him, and the game is balanced in a way where at least Sin is a great champion when he is used at an optimal level. If someone is not being optimal with him, he is a pretty lackluster champion. Now before we get right into the list, honestly these champions can be used to get the high elo, and these champions can perform fairly decent in higher elo, but there are many other junglers like early game junglers that people would prefer. Also these champions are champions you don't have to play, in fact you can play any champion in lower elo and still perform really well with that champ but you will have a better chance of winning if you had these junglers. So with the do, finally, why don't we get started? Now, first up, it's gonna be Amumu. Now, I know what you're thinking, you probably didn't see that one coming, but um, Amumu is a champion that is known as one of the bronze gods. If you guys haven't seen that picture of Brown Zodia, he's in there. And for a good reason, because he's really good in that CLO. Now, the reason he is so good is because he provides a lot of CC with his ultimate in Q, and is really good at initiating team fights, and he also has a lot of base damage, um, especially with his W doing maximum percent health damage. He is also fairly easy to use because, well, you just press R and you win, or flash R, or even Q and R. The reason he doesn't work in higher ELO is because his early game is sort of weak, he does not have an escape so it can be really easy to kill him and abuse that early game. He also has no dealing potential so he will lose 1v1s and in 2v2s if he's not level 6 he will not have a good time. Here is the build that I recommend using with the Mumu. For item build I do go more of an AP style. I do think Rune Echoes is better than Cinder Hulk unless you're behind and for the Rune page it can be a simple AP page. Skill order is pretty simple too, max of E, max of Q second, and then W last. And that is a moo, moo for you guys. Next up is gonna be your boy, Udyr. Now he may be a champion who might get nerfed in the future because he's actually really strong in high elo too, but I feel like he might be a champion who will always be strong in lower elo. No one started using him until Runic Echoes was really OP on him. But yeah, right now, Season 6 complements him so well, like the masteries, the item builds like ZZ Rod Portal, Swiftness, Iceborne Gauntlet, there's just so much synergy with him with like the item items and builds and stuff. Basically, he's pretty easy to play, you just have to know your macro game, and even if you don't, you can just farm the jungle and be a threat later in the game. 
You come out mid-game a beast because you're really tanky as you can spam your shield pretty often while outputting a bunch of damage. Your skirmishing is one of the best, although your team fight is a bit lackluster because you can be easily kited, but right now Uder just has so much movement speed it's actually pretty hard to kite him. So yeah, definitely a champion that is really strong and lower elo and even high elo at the moment. Now here is the build I do recommend. I already did a guide on this so there will be a link in the description below for a more in-depth guide but this is the basis of it. And next up we have another Trick 2G champion. So this champion lower elo, why is he so good? Well again he's pretty easy to play, run off the people, fling them back to you and then press R and then E and then you know bite people's heads off when they're pretty low. Easy champion, not hard to screw up on. But he's also really good at skirmishing because, well, he's got his passive to back him up. His base damage is pretty strong. His team fighting is actually pretty good with his ultimate, you know, doing chain lightning damage and also just being like a bruiser. And yeah, if everyone just stands around him and team fights, well, he's gonna be pretty dominant. And he does scale pretty well into the mid game and somewhat late game, but not as powerful as, say, someone like Amumu. Now there's a Volibear main in high elo named David Ryu, and I do see him perform decently on Volibear, but the reason I do not play him in high elo is because I feel like I get kited a lot, I feel like I cannot initiate as well as some other champions, and I have to wait for my team to initiate or something like that, and ganking with him is just so hard, since he doesn't really have a gap closer. He's good at uh, ganking people who are overextended though, but basically he's a champion that's Kinda hard to mess up on. Now for the build, we go 12-0-18 for the masteries. I use my tanky rune page for it, but if you are a fresh level 30, you can go a basic marksman's page. And for the item build, it does look like this. And that is it for Volibear. Let's move on to, ooh, Master Yi. Master Yi is a champion who is, well, pretty simple to play. Farm early game, kill everybody mid game and late game. In terms of mechanics, well, um, the only thing you have to look out for is maybe using your alpha strike to dodge certain abilities. But even if you don't dodge a certain ability, you're, well, you'll probably still be successful as long as you know how to clean up and go in at the right times. So yeah, a very easy champion to play. And he scales incredibly into the mid game and late game, so there's no question about that. And he's also a great team fighter and a decent skirmisher. Actually, he's a pretty good skirmisher. In high elo, he doesn't really bring any early game pressure, and he can only gank when he's level 6, although there's still somewhat weak ganks. He is also vulnerable to just getting caught out since he does not have any escapes until he's level 6, and overall in early game, he is just a weak jungler. But yeah, in low elo, no one cares about early game, everyone cares about that mid game and late game. Here is the build I do recommend with him. You can go Blade of Rune King if you want, or you know other items and DD yourself, but this seems somewhat standard for Master Yi. Next up, we have the Xin Zhao. So, Xin Zhao, a really fun champion once you get a few items. You know, Sated Devour and Gunzu's Rage Blade. But Xin Zhao is a champion who has recently been buffed, and is what a lot of people are saying is OP. I can say that he's not OP at all. Well, at least in my elo. But the reason he is so good in lower elo is because, well, he's very easy to play. Like, E, W, Q, press R, how can you screw up that, right? Very little room for mistakes, and he is a really good skirmisher if he's fed and has like a lot of support. Then he's a really good team fighter since he'll be doing a lot of damage, and he's got a really good mid game and late game. He's also got a decent early game, but uh, in higher elo, he actually has a problem where it is easy to catch him out since he does not have any escapes, and it is easy to burst him down since he's fairly squishy. But in lower elo, people won't prioritize on mistakes as much, so that's really good for him. Now here's a build for him, basically like Master Yi, but some things are a little different. And yeah, Xin is probably one of the stronger champions in this list for lower elos. And finally, we have Shavana. You know, while making this list, I can see why all of you guys think Devourer is OP, because so many champions that are good in lower elo use the Devourer. But talking about Shivana, her mid game and late game is pretty good, as she has a lot of percent maximum health damage with her E, and she does a fuck ton of damage with her E Q combo. So yeah, her damage output with the Devourer is really insane. Plus, she has one of the fastest clears in the game, and yeah, team fighting and skirmishing, really good. Now, the build looks something like this, you could go skirmish or saber if you wanted, but yeah, it's more of a tanky build than the glass cannon like Xin Zhao and Master Yi build. And that is all for today, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. In my last video, I asked you guys what your thoughts about tilting and not surrendering in League of Legends, and here are some of my favorite comments. Now, for this video, I want you guys to comment below on what is your go-to jungler. Like, what is your jungler that you're confident in winning with? Mine would be Elise. But yeah, that is all for today. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And this video is actually going to be sponsored by my boys from Pro Guides. I highly suggest you check them out for all your ranked games this season. Anyways, if you did like this video, make sure to leave a like. And if you want to subscribe for more future videos like this, um, wait, I fucked that up. Anyways, I'll see you guys next time.